Captain God. And welcome back to another episode of Star of the Command, where I'm Brad Spostman, I'm Lieutenant Commander Tyrk of the Frigate GCS Hurl, as we continue our campaign against what will likely end up being the Klingon Empire. That's right, the current votes seem to be in, they definitely want us to be heading for the Klingons, and so it's gonna be a long trip and a long campaign. But hey, it's fun, interesting, and you get to see a plasma race kick the crap out of a race that doesn't have plasma, thus proving the plasma is superior to all things. But in order to do that, we need to save up quite a bit of prestige and lots and lots of big ships so let us set out into space to continue to attempt to find them and we're going to take a distress call sure why not i don't quite recall what distress distress call will be it's not going to be the enigma mission but oh yeah we have to go and save a friendly ship that's already engaged half the time you don't actually need to get involved in the battle because they'll take care of it for you and in this case it does look like we have an enemy frigate according to uh, we need to quickly get up to speed. i'm so used to driving a battleship that takes forever to get up to speed a nimble little frigate that zips on forward is a bit of a novelty so we are currently squaring off with what the fleet screen tells us is a k5r the romai palma so it's not a klingon vessel despite looking like a klingon vessel it is one of the romulan vessels that were created under klingon designs so the romulans and klingons have a technology trade treaty where the romulans get advanced systems like power and hull designs and the klingons get I'm not 100% sure. I think it has something to do with the cloaking device, but it doesn't make a super ton of sense if I'm completely honest, purely from the perspective of you don't see a lot of Klingon ships in this era with cloaking devices. It is rather rare. But uh, he's squaring off against one of our similar FFF or GFF type frigates, so the GCS Steel Jaws. That is a way cooler name than Hurl. I think we may have gotten gypped a little bit. We may have annoyed somebody at Gorn. Academy. I was about to say Starfleet Academy, but no, Gorn Navy Academy. So the Romai Palma is, of course, in cloak, but he charges his twin F-type plasma torpedoes. This is a very powerful ship. Just in this era, he has three Phaser 2s, two Phaser 1s, and then a pair of twin plasma Fs. He outguns us actually pretty significantly if he uses it properly. Now, we're pretty tough. We might have him, might have an advantage over him in terms of just being able to take damage, but twin Fs is just scary. Luckily for us, he is going to stay underneath Cloak until we actually manage to get there, so that's going to work out wonderfully. I'm actually going to steal a little bit more power. The Plasma F Torpedo has finished charging. We get a little bit of power back, so we get to go up to maximum speed. He is coming out of Cloak. Now, we know from experience so far that they don't seem to be reacting to a single Plasma F Torpedo, so I'm just going to dump it on him as soon as I get the range in. Now, he's traveling away at a, at a speed of 22, uh, so... Our plasma torpedo will travel to speed of 36, meaning we got to get relatively close to him before good things can happen. We, of course, do not want to get in front of him because those plasma torpedoes he's carting are deadly. But that'll go, and that should hit him at full strength. Oh, right in the open shield sector as well. I may as well fire a, a couple of phasers towards him as well. He's going back into cloak. And our Steel Jaws friends also took the blast, just straight out, of, didn't try, attempt to defend himself all that much. We're going to slow way down, we got a really good hit on that. I'm very happy with the way that the gunnery crew, well, I can't say that I'm happy with how gunnery crew works, because these weapons won't miss. But I'm very pleased with the way that the, uh, that the Plasma Torpedo actually managed to impact on him. Being able to skip the shield entirely managed to just deal all 20 damage right on towards him. And we're about to have another little phaser pass here. Uh, hopefully I can get all three on, but I doubt it. Because I, I would need to shoot into that open shield, otherwise it'll be basically wasted. And even then, it's mostly wasted. The problem with hunt fighting the Romulans, especially Romulans who are actually charging their cloaking devices or, or charging their plasma torpedoes, is they're only going to pop out on occasion. And so you've really got to try and take advantage of anything you can. I didn't mean to do that, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, there we go. Keep knocking his shield down bit by bit. Eventually, we'll manage to break something. Now, one thing that Romulan ships do have that the AI does not make use of is they have nuclear space mines. These are exactly what it says on the tin. He can drop a mine that is a nuclear bomb. You can blow ships up with those pretty severely. This one does 10 damage. I believe the nuclear space mine does... I want to say 50, but it's probably closer to 20. But it is, it, when it goes out, it deploys as a giant blue uh, pulsing thing. And you only get one of them, but you get one for every single space combat that you're at, so you're never technically out of mines as Romulans. So it does an absolute ton of damage, and is a lot of fun to use. And if you manage to hit it, I think he's going to duck, duck back in the cloak, isn't he? Ooh, no, probably not. He's may not have enough power. So we should be able to come in here with our finishing blow. It may not be, but we're going to attempt it. 
plasma torpedo is selected and ready. But yeah, the nuclear space mine is absolutely devastating if you manage to land a hit. It's not easy to get a hit because you can't beam it out. You have to deploy it from the shuttle bay, so by pressing the M key, or it's like control M or left shift M or something. I'll spam it when I finally play around with the Romulan campaign just to make sure that it works. But you can only dump it out of the shuttle bay behind you, so no beaming around, which means in order to place it without hurting yourself, you gotta be pretty bang on. And because the Romulans don't really have much in the way of drones, it can be a little bit difficult. Although, you can mass plasma torpedo people, and they'll freak out about it and immediately attempt to defend themselves. So, the Romai Palma is definitely going to die here. I think Steel Jaws is probably going to be able to kill him first, but if we're lucky, we might be, gonna, might be able to get around with our phasers and finish him off. Although, I doubt it. Although, the Steel Jaws has clearly taken a pretty serious pounding, managing to take one of those plasma torpedoes right on. Uh, yeah, we got it. Thank you. All Romulan ships neutralized. So, a successful mission by the Gorn. A pair of frigates working together. That's the Gorn way. So, let's see how much prestige that one's going to be worth. He did outgun us pretty severely, but there were two of us. So, 300 prestige. Not bad at all. <clears throat> Pardon me. We're up to... Oh, we are just a hundred and something away from being able to get our Allosaurus Rex Command Cruiser. So, let's see. It's a shipyard defense. This could work either really well for us or really bad for us depending on how it shakes out so let's red alert and get ready for combat we're star squaring off against a frigate and a frigate and our friends are the snarl and the snarl is well he's a q ship with a whole bunch of phasers and the other snarl who also only has a whole bunch of phasers we are in trouble because <laughs> i'm looking at two snipes and another snipe so this is not great uh our star dock is equipped i assume with plasma torpedoes as well let's do a quick check of the fleet repair dock yeah it may be a good idea just to let them get in close because trying to fight these snipes is gonna be a little bit rough so the snipe normally is gonna have two phaser ones and a plasma torpedo uh i don't know what the sna is gonna have it should be a standard snipe with a small refit but that may not actually be the case huh, it's probably the romai palma again and we don't have names on either of these so let's kick up the speed a little bit it it's going to be unfortunate to say, but I'm fairly certain that the other two ships in our defense group, they're just going to be targets. We're going to use them as distraction and, well, weapons fodder so that we can take advantage of a couple of shots. Maybe actually, hmm, now that I think about it, the Snarl that's the freighter version, if he manages to survive their first plasma torpedo assault, we actually may be able to take significant advantage of that because his number of phasers makes him really good at trying to probe out people who are you who are trying to hide in cloak okay he managed to hit us from long range with a phaser which is not great so we're starting to skirmish over here we got an snp with us we're going to start to slow down relatively soon and by that i mean now because we don't want to get too close double plasma torpedo oh it's not ready not good i don't want to get this close but it's almost ready and fire the plasma torpedo and full power and turn away and run and run and run and run and run Good. Okay, so his forward shield managed to take all 20 points of damage of that, which is actually pretty impressive. But his G-type plasma torpedo does not hit us, which is good. Uh, you've also got a G-type plasma torpedo. You may have taken a G-type plasma torpedo, and you're coming in from long, long distance. So the goal at this point is to bait out a plasma torpedo from a range that won't actually hurt us, and never slow down, because slowing down will get us killed. Uh, this does mean, of course, that we're having a little bit of a hard time charging our plasma torpedo when all things are... Oh, is it not charged? We didn't check that, partially because I was a little bit afraid, but we've noticed that these snipes tend to have problems charging up their plasma torpedoes. If that's the case, because we know the other one isn't charged. So let's see if we can't sneak in here close enough. It's not charged. Really? Okay, slow way down. It's the Impavitus, and the Impavitus is missing his most potent weapon. Which, you know, probably not the greatest thing he's ever done. That, however, is a really great plan right there to dump a mine on me because I'm going to have to take that mine and it's probably going to knock out one of my shields. On the other hand, it also knocked out his. So we've got that working for us. So we've lost a shield, which is a bit unfortunate. And we really don't want to move away from him too much. Hi. Um, I don't have a huge problem with you doing this, although it is a little bit irritating because you are going to somewhat ruin my ability to do really cool things to you, which is blast you in the back unless i were to follow the turn with you which we did so hi open this turn 
Another 14 damage. Our Plasma F Torpedo is almost ready to go. Now, Romulan ships will be able to outturn us. The Gorn have terrible, terrible turning arcs. They are horrifically unmaneuverable vessels, and it's rather painful, actually. But if we do manage to get that Plasma Torpedo on arc, then we're going to have a lot of fun with him. There we go. Right into his back. Ooh, 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 another 20 damage. He's lost most of his systems. We just got to stay here. Tight freaking battles. Uh, not necessarily high speed, but def- Ooh, good. Okay, so the first attacker has been destroyed, and we're on to the second snipe. Second snipe has been destroyed thanks to the combined efforts of the other two, and the SNA decided not to get involved in the fight. So he's just staying at low speed off in the distance. Uh, let's increase the speed of time and just go for him. Uh, actually, you know what? I want to bring one of you with me. You've been dented. You haven't really been dented. So, despite the fact that he's got more systems, I'm going to bring you with me. So, let's charge up a tractor beam. we got to bring him. Hi, you're coming with me because you decided you weren't going to do anything. But uh, we're going to do things together. It's going to be fun. We'll have a good time. If you could turn on your tractor beam and pick up him, that'd be awesome. Wow. He's a frigate and he's managed to get himself up to triple white shields. Well, they're blue now, but originally they were just colorless. So, that is the most powerful shield la layer that you can actually demonstrate. So we're just going to rush as fast as we can over here and see if we can't cause a little bit of havoc. There he goes. He's going to start shooting now. I could launch a probe, but uh, I'm not quite sure what would happen at that point. I'd probably ha have to lose power in uh, speed. So yeah, he looks to be exactly the same armament. And now I can drop this since we're now in the combat zone. Let him go. And whoosh, we take off at high speed. He's still sitting at zero speed. Oh, that's lovely. All right, so the problem is that this guy is sitting in cloak. And he's not charging his plasma torpedo, so he will never decloak. So we've just got to continually blast him with phaser fire until eventually he dies. But it's going to be a while. And by a while, I mean a long time. Because trying to get through all of the shield defenses that you have when you've only got three phaser ones, it's not a quick affair. <laughs> I'm actually halfway tempted to go back, pick up the other Snarl, and drag him towards me. That may be the best thing to do. In fact, you know what? Yeah, let's go grab the other Snarl. <laughs> oh, this is this is kind of painful. Oh, low-level frigate Romulans. Not enough power to charge all their systems and cloak, but they want to do it so badly. Alright, we're coming to pick you up. You're coming with us. I'm just going to bring everybody over to this guy. <laughs> Just so they'll sit there and blink away. Eventually we'll weaken his shields. It'll be great. Oh, as we are severely slowed by having to drag such a huge freighter. Will you turn your engines on as well? Am I going to have to drag you both over into the area? Clearly, that is how this is going to have to do. He started opening fire as well. You know, I would drag the Stardox too, but I can't. You cannot actually pick them up and move them. Hello, all weapons. Last do that. Uh, this, turn it off. Okay, now we have everybody held nice and tight. So everybody is nice and close to this guy, so we can just start laying into him. So just continuous loops to try and cut through his shields. And if, when we get lucky, it'll happen. I believe it. It's just going to take a little while. <laughs> can you believe that we did the, Rymulin, the Gorn versus Romulan campaign first? Way back in the first series? This is what we had to deal with. Fighting Romulans can be frustrating at times just because the AI limitations. Slow down a bit so we can get a tighter turn coming in. I'm going to get all my weapons on target and point blank range. There we go. Ooh, we got some penetration now. So if we deal enough damage, if we break his power systems enough, he has to decloak. And since he's not charging his plasma torpedo, he clearly doesn't have a lot of power at the moment. The problem is, as you can see, we're doing about one point of damage. So, eventually things will go our way. Eventually. Oh, I don't have the right turn radius. So I'm being dragged away from that open hole in his shields. We're going to go out a little bit more to make sure that we actually get to that hole. Because it's a very important location to go after. Otherwise, we're just wasting a lot of firepower on shields that are still up. Back it back down. There we go. Oh, fighting Romulans and Cloak. Unfortunately, the other problem. So what? there are several ways of actually dealing with somebody who's cloaked. And normally, most vessels that are going to try and fight cloaked are actually reasonably quick. I'm thinking specifically Firehawks and the like. They're very fast, heavy cruisers. And even under cloak, they can maintain quite a, quite the speed. The problem is because the Romai Palma is so small, he's invulnerable. He's basically invulnerable to most of the anti-cloak tactics. So the most, the biggest one that you're going to notice is flash cubing. 
And basically what flash cubing is, is you drop a mine or you transport a mine near somebody and that mine explodes on them if they're traveling over a speed of four, even if they're cloaked. So it's an area denial weapon, but if you manage to just dump it on them, if they're traveling above a speed of four, it explodes, it reveals them. If you happen to have a tractor being charged and ready during this time, what you can do is immediately grab onto him because he's decloaked. And now he's sitting there using all that power in the cloaking device and not getting any benefit from it. Aside from maybe the damage reduction, it's not quite clear on that and how it works in Starfleet Battles. At least in the way that it's described. So by doing that, you grab onto them and you just fire all your weapons into them. And they can push you back. They can build up a repel tractor beam. But that takes a long time to do. And so, Well, not a long time. It takes a little while. About the same amount of time as you saw us taking to charge up our tractor beam to drag these guys over. So it takes some time to actually get done. And during that time, you can just lay into them with plasma torpedoes, with missiles, accurate fire with the phasers. It's just a great way of dealing with the enemy. Unfortunately, he's traveling below that speed, and so we can't see him. Basically, we're forced down to just steadily whittling him down until we can eventually break his power systems because the romulan ai what it likes to do is after it finishes charging its plasma torpedoes that's when it likes to decloak and come after you well he's not charging it now he's never going to finish charging it because he doesn't even have enough power to stay cloaked move and charge his torpedo and because he's traveling beneath the speed of one he can't slow down anymore to try and free up power to charge that plasma torpedo this creates the irritating circumstance of you are fighting a Romulan frigate who doesn't have enough power to move at a speed of even one, who doesn't have enough power to charge his plasma torpedo, but will not decloak because his AI dictates, hey, you need to cloak since your plasma torpedo isn't ready to go. It can be a bit of a problem. Especially since most of the time that you run into these frigates, you're going to be at a low level frigate yourself. So you really don't have an overwhelming number of phasers to cut through these defenses. Oh, there he goes. Okay, so he's finally decloaked. He's finally vulnerable to our fire. So now we can really get involved in the fight. Starting to pick up speed, doing 4.7. Jeez. Early frigates, man, for the Romulans. There we go. That battle only took 10 minutes. <laughs> and most of that was just plinking away at that poor, poor guy. As he just sat there because his AI just would not let him decloak to actually try and fight us. All right, 450 prestige is exactly what you need. That puts us up to 2,000. Shipyard, hello. We have come to buy the thing. Do you have the thing? Uh, there it is. Just going to do a quick check, see if anything new has come out. Oh, wow, that's a lot of Gorn Command cruisers. Has anything newer come out? Tugs, PTs, CACCs. Yeah, this is the latest and the greatest. So let's grab the Gorn Command cruiser. Bye. It is the GCS Predatonicon. A very impressive name by anyone. So uh, let us trade in the Hurl. We actually managed to get through without ever, ever having to repair it. Wonderful. And so the Predatoricon is our brand new vessel. We are up to six shuttles as well as a whole host of additional systems. So we're actually going to kit ourselves out pretty good here because I anticipate being inside the Predatoricon for quite some time. Uh, if the last campaign is anything to go by. So if we just rig ourselves out now, we won't have to pay for it later. Lovely. All right, so we're going to be able to do this for a while, so let's set out into space and enjoy the brand new firepower that is the Predator Con. And we'll go on a patrol, a perfect opportunity to test out our brand new weapon systems, which I believe are a pair of G-type plasma torpedoes and two phase and eight phaser ones. So... I love the Gorn voice. It is one of the coolest voices in the game. Phasers, plasma torpedoes, phasers and plasma torpedoes, love it. So the weapon groups are already set. Let's see how fast this tub can go. Uh, we're gonna ch actually, no, let's figure out what proper battle speed will be before we start messing around with additional th systems. So he is capable of doing 19. And he is so close to being able to do a speed of 20, but he's one point of power too high for that. So we're gonna reduce our speed by one. Prep a wild weasel shuttle because hey we're plasma races and we need to worry about this and yeah we're gonna be rigged and ready for combat in short order without the plasma torpedo we can zip or without the phaser capacitors charging we get up to a speed of 26 27 so we are not a slow vessel anymore squaring off against a romulan heavy cruiser a war eagle uh if i'm not mistaken he's gonna have a single plasma r he might have two i'm fairly certain it's one though i think it's one plasma r and four phaser ones let's go find out again the gourd voice is probably the best voice in this game the klingon one is really good too but the the gorn one is really fun 
So let's find out exactly what he's packing. He's a, just a standard Romulan War Eagle, a very early heavy cruiser of theirs. Yep, single plasma R and four phaser ones. So technically, despite the fact he only has a single plasma torpedo, he has more damage in his plasma torpedoes than we do. Because the two G-type plasma torpedoes, they don't actually give you any more damage than the Plasma F, they just give you more range. So, we've doubled the firepower in Plasma that we used to have in our frigate. But by doing that, we jumped up from a frigate through the destroyer, the light cruiser, to the heavy cruiser. So three orders of magnitude to get up here. So, that, that should tell you something. Uh, I'm gonna get him to stop. So, fire pseudos and break. So I anticipate he will actually respond to this in the way that I'm hoping that he will. And we're going to kick our speed up to maximum power so that we are ready to run if he fires that R-type plasma torpedo. And that's what I was hoping for. Uh, by the way, I have a 100% chance of a high energy turn. So this wild weasel will stay out here for uh, as long as he... Quite a while. As long as he stays beneath the speed of 4. However, he crash stops in order to use it and then will immediately begin to accelerate. And once he passes that speed of four, he will have the ability, he, this uh, wild weasel will disappear. The other way we could handle it is we could, you know, shoot at him, but, or shoot at it. And that would destroy it in five seconds after it was blown up. Or that would cause the effect to stop after four. Alright, we need to stay behind him, so, but at the same time. Oh, 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 beautiful. So, an excellent pass on through. And we're going to retreat in good order, get down to our speed of 18 so we can charge up all weapon systems. And he's starting to recover his speed, firing back with his phaser ones, but he's lost half the armament already. I think we may have even broken his plasma R, find out. Uh, yes we did. <laughs> so his primary armament has been gutted, it looks like. We are prepared to defend ourselves against... Oh no, that's real. Okay, full power, full power, let's get out of here. All powered engines. Let's see if we can accelerate in time. We are not going to accelerate in time. I don't want to have to use it. All phases in point defense. Yep, they are. Uh, how, how many can shoot backwards? Most of them. So we may have enough power to reduce this enough. Let's find out. Oh, ho, ho. That's a plasma torpedo. That's a plasma torpedo after having been fired at by four phaser ones. After having to travel a long distance. The plasma or torpedo is scary. Let's increase the speed of time. As long as we're going to be here, he's down in cloak. He's got three turns before he can prepare his weapon systems. Ours will be ready faster, but at the same time, we also have knocked down one of his shields. Ooh, good moves. Um, I could respond with mine of my own, and I shall. So he's a bit trapped in there, and in fact, I'm going to turn. We're going to bounce this. And he took two mines. Oh, look at how much damage we could deal to him in short order. So as long as we drive our vessel skillfully... We can handle pretty much anything he can throw at us. In a brute force matchup, eh, we're actually better than he is, I feel. The eight phaser ones is just a significant amount of firepower that he does not have a way of overcoming. Uh, his four phaser ones, plasma are notwithstanding, you only get to use that once every few turns. Uh, all phasers? I guess they weren't in interested in firing, okay. So he's up to four phasers, but his plasma R appears to be completely offline at this point. We're about to have our plasma torpedoes ready to go again. Do we have pseudos? We do not. So we're going to stagger fire them. Toss this one at his face and see how he wants to deal with that one. Higher energy turn is a 79% chance. Not worth testing. And your forward shield's almost gone, sir. And most of your ship is almost gone at this point. Hey, Marines. Would you like to steal? Go. He's ours. So that was easy. All right, we're going to pull away after having captured a War Eagle because we can put over three Marines at a time. He had two by that point, and he's even going to have an intact Plasma R Torpedo. Well, if he finishes fixing it, but yeah, that's very useful. As you can see, the Ellsworth Rex, a significant upgrade in firepower. Oh, it's a lovely ship for a Gorn ship. I don't mean physically, although, yeah, Gorn ships do not look beautiful. I'm sorry. And we're going to capture it while it's under cloak as well. So we know it has an active working cloaking device as well. Perfect. A wonderful p prize for the Gordon Confederation. There we go. Mission complete. All vessels captured. Excellent work, Marines. We only lost one Marine. Well, we'll have to replace three, but we only lost one Marine in actually taking that entire crew. Not bad. 372 prestige is our reward for a job. Very well done. And the tile is down to five. 
But that's going to do it for today's episode. I've been Tarek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe before I see a notification every time I post one of these videos. Press that little bell icon, leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next episode.